in the history of Clemson football, who are some of the worst hires, not just head coaches. I'm just talking about coaching at Clemson University for Clemson football. I'm diving into it right now. I know it is February. I can't believe it. We're still so far away from the 2024 season. We do have spring football coming up uh, and, and not too terribly too long. I got my words twisted there. Welcome to Clemson Football Live. I am Brian. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, I hope you'll subscribe, pass it along to your friends, your neighbors, even the people who hate my guts. Maybe they'll just leave a thumbs down. Now, I'm going to tell you that a few days ago, I got online and I was looking for some information with Clemson football, just checking in on things. And I saw this really good article by one of the Clemson publications. I'm not affiliated with them. I have no hard feelings towards them. But, you know, some publications don't want to be affiliated with me. Now, I haven't heard anything about this. I'm, I'm saying too much, but they, they haven't said anything towards me that I know of. But they did a heck of an, argue, uh, of an article. I think it was uh, Rubbing the Rock. And it was the top five worst Clemson head coaches of all time. And I knew who number one was going to be without even straining hard. And of course, it was. But I got the idea to go down a list of the worst coaches that has, cl that has coached at Clemson um, in probably the past 25 years. Um, maybe stretch it to 30 a touch. We're starting to get, get on farther out in time. And so this is not limited to head coaches. This is coaches. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, some of you will remember somebody that I won't remember but I will tell you that the vast majority of these coaches uh, that I'm going to talk about are position coaches or coordinators, and and they've worked for Clemson within the past 12 years, so or 13 years, somewhere in there. So, um, but you will see you will see uh, a, a familiar face here. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that everybody is joining me. So let's start off. And before I start off, let me say this. I am talking about these men, but transparently, I, I have nothing personal against them. A lot of these guys, yeah, if I was their family and I were to see this, I'd be upset. I'd be like, how dare that redneck buffoon say anything against this family member? Also, remember these guys, a lot of them, when they are fired, they're paid a lot of money to go away. So, so if you and I are fired from a job, they tell us to go away. And if they give us any severance, there it's nothing compared to a lot of these guys on the list. A lot of them are making a lot of money, and that's fine. I'm a capitalist. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I just like to get that off of my chest. I am not attacking these guys personally. I'm just saying when they were in their role at Clemson, or and if they are still in their role in Clemson, they just haven't produced very well. So I am going to lead off. There's six of them. There's not five. Or there's six of them. I'm going to lead off with one who was very well known and just retired defensive coordinator Kevin Steele. Now, Kevin Steele just retired supposedly from college football. If you know anything about Kevin Steele, he's actually from South Carolina. He's from Dillon, South Carolina. Some of you are like, Dillon, where is Dillon? Well, it's like go towards Myrtle Beach and kind of somewhere up there above there going back towards Florence in that general area, that's Dillon. It's a very small town. It produced Derek Hamilton for us, the fantastic wide receiver from, you know, the early 2000s. But Kevin Steele came here. He coached with uh, Sweeney. Sweeney hired him in. He had coached a lot of different places. He played football for one year at Furman back in, what, in the 70s, went and played at Tennessee. He's coached a lot of places. Kevin Steele has made a lot of money coaching football. All right? And that's fine, again. But you have to remember, Dabo Sweeney fired this guy. He fired him after losing to Geno Smith and the West Virginia Mountaineers 70-33. to That was the final, wasn't it? I, I, I try to forget every day. But he fired him. 
and he brought in Brent Venables. Everybody thinks about Brent. Everybody thinks about that that wonderful uh, nest that was, and still very fond in our hearts when he hired uh, Brent Venables, brought him in, but he unfortunately had to fire Kevin Steele because, I mean, you, you just got blown out. I mean, it, it was just, I'm sorry, it just, it just was what it was. So that leading off at number six, Kevin Steele, I think, I don't think that he was a terrible hire in the sense of he was just awful. It was just after the dust settled, you realize that he was not on the same plane as where Sweeney was taking the team at the time. Um, so, again, I don't think that uh, – I'm not I I'm not thinking I'm not saying that Kevin still can't coach football but I'm saying that when he was at Clemson it was kind of it was I don't know. I mean how, how do you give up that many points not just in a regular game in the Orange Bowl. So that will live in infamy forever. Moving on to number 5. Remember I said there were 6 of these. Number 5. A guy who played quarterback at Furman. I watched him play quarterback at Furman. I think I did. Anyway, played quarterback at Furman. I just hit hit this. It looks like I'm, oh, I'm having an earthquake. No, I'm not. Upstate of South Carolina, earthquake. But this guy, this guy played quarterback at Furman from 1999 to 2002. He was a GA at Clemson in 2003 to 2005. Then he came back and 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 he was a tight ends coach from 06 to 08. Dabo Sweeney gave him the chance to be the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach 2009 to 2010. And then he had to let him go. Yes, folks, you know exactly who I am talking about. He's now, and I, I think he won't even finish the season out. I saw their schedule. Billy Napier, a soon-to-be, I think, former Florida head coach, Billy Napier. Now, when Billy was running things at Clemson, I, I'm going to give I'm going to give him I'm going to give him a, an olive branch here. Billy Napier was coaching a team that was in the rebuilding years of Clemson. Um, there was some talent there, but not near the talent that they needed. Um, but Napier was not the man for the job at the time. Now, I want to say this about Billy Napier, and I've said this a hundred times. Uh, he did a really good job at Louisiana. Just hiring him at Florida did not make sense. And by the way, this is, remember this, remember this. This is going to be a reoccurring thing with a lot of the guys I'm about to mention. Because you can be good, a good coach at one place and not be a good coach somewhere else. All right? Or... You can go prematurely into a into a um, coaching role and lose some of your credibility, um, ruin your brand, maybe never come back from it. That's what a lot of people forgets about is is if you go into a coaching job too early and you're not ready for it, you can destroy your personal brand and you may never recover. You may never get a chance. It might take 20 years for you to get a chance that had you just waited a few, you would have got that chance there, been ready for it, and flourished. Just follow me. But Billy Napier, I believe, was premature going to Florida. I think there's more issues at Florida than Florida. Or than just Billy Napier, excuse me. There's more issues with Florida, and it is Florida. So, um, Billy Napier, I fully expect him to be fired this year. Have you seen their schedule? Go look at their schedule. It's awful. A lot of guys couldn't survive this, but with everything that's went on with him at Florida, don't be shocked if he. My nose keeps itching on these live streams. I have no reason, uh, no, I have no clue why. Anyway, um, yeah, he he's. I I. I think he'll be fired this year. Uh, it's just it's just not looking good for him. But he goes down as my fifth worst uh, Clemson hire. And uh, uh, Sweeney fired him pretty pretty fast. I think after two seasons, it was done. Number four, someone we know very well. 
This guy spent two years at another school, and he came back to coach at Clemson. Recently fired Thomas Austin. Once again, if you are not ready for a role, one of the worst things that can happen is for you to take said role and not do so well at it. And he had very little experience. This is the this is my thing with Thomas Austin. Thomas Austin is a tiger through and through. Thomas Austin just got the job, I think, prematurely. He probably should have spent a few years in the Sun Belt, sun belt more than a few years. He, he, should have, he should have been around other teams. He should have been around other coaches who had no tie to him. They, he, should, he should have just learned. Now, let's pause there. If someone gives you the chance to come home and coach, are you going to turn that away, especially paying you well? The answer is no. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. I'm just saying I think too much too soon for Thomas Austin. I don't think that he's a bad football coach overall. I'm just saying too much, too soon, and he got fired. So Thomas Austin, just too much, too soon. And, and folks, once again, I can't put this on Thomas Austin for being for accepting a chance to come back and coach uh, for his team. Now, we have three more left. We went through three, Kevin Steele, Billy Napier, Thomas Austin. Next up at number three, this is a guy who played quarterback for Clemson. This is a guy who was a quarterback's coach for Clemson. This was a guy who was given a chance. And once again, he's Clemson through and through. But Brandon Streeter. Brandon Streeter. I still don't feel comfortable or even put together that Streeter was the one who was who was calling the plays for one year. Um I I just I liked him when he was a quarterback at Clemson. He was he was playing during that uh first season of Tommy Bowden. Uh he played for a very bad football team. Um he played second fiddle the entire time that Tommy West was here. Uh, coaching and, you know, basically doing as good as he could possibly do. We'll talk about that later. Just, you know, let the cat out of the bag. But Brandon Streeter, I had high hopes for him. And it just looked like a lot of the same plays regurgitated over and over and over and over again. And... I, I hate it. I, I hate that he had to be fired. Uh, there's a part of you that goes, was he hired too soon? But then he had been around the program for a while. He'd been around the program uh, during its heyday. In fact, he has more coaching experience than a lot of the guys that are still on the offensive coaching staff. That's just the truth. That's not me taking a dagger at anyone or throwing a dagger at someone. It's not me you know, smacking their baby in the face and calling it ugly. I'm just saying that's the truth. But Brandon Streeter just was not ready for the game. And um, he's now an analyst at Georgia. And uh, uh, I, I really hated how that all went down. But I saw him call in person. Obviously, I watched him call a lot. Uh, you, you have to remember, he filled in for Tony Elliott when he had uh, the virus that was going around at the time um, against Justin Fields and Ohio State. And th that's when they finally got their first win against Clemson. And they not only beat Clemson, they beat the piss out of Clemson. And so if you can't win with Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne and those guys, I mean, who are you going to win with? I mean, really, who are you going to win with? So um, that's really, really sad. Moving on to number two. Number two. Number two is one of contention. He is a former Tiger football player. He was a player that I enjoyed watching while he was at Clemson. He was somebody that uh, that was not Hunter Renfro, but he was before Hunter Renfro. He was someone that you could you could trust to get the ball to. But unfortunately, I think he falls into the common thing that you're seeing with Napier, Austin, Streeter, 
It's too much too soon. He had absolutely, from what I can remember, absolutely no experience once he was being hired at Clemson. And unfortunately, that is Tyler Grisham. Folks, wide receiver you, we're, we're more like wide receiver community college now. Uh, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, since Tyler has taken over, we have recruited three and four star wide receivers, a few five stars or one five star, who's come in, and you hear me commonly say this, a lot of you get mad, you're like, have some hope. Yeah, how is it that I know they're going to drop the football and then you're shocked every time? That, that's not being a fan, that's, that's being naive. Um, Tyler uh, has recruit. he's very good at recruiting. Tyler Grisham can recruit, and we know he could play very well. Um, but we're having wide receivers who, and I constantly say this, but I can give you example after example. Uh, E.J. Williams in his freshman year looked incredible. His next year, uh, he was dropping balls left and right. E.J. was a big recruit coming out of high school. E.J. Williams, in fact, in his, if you go back and look at his freshman highlights, he looked like a machine. Uh, his, his second year, dropping balls left and right, transferred out. Um, Dakari, Dakari Collins was a solid recruit, never budded. Uh, Bo Collins, last year, I know he had some injury. Bo Collins been a, 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 one of my favorites. Uh, dropping balls left and right. What's going on there? And now he's at Notre Dame. You know, maybe they can fix it there. But um, uh, Antonio Williams, before he got hurt this year, last year he was jumping up between three guys and catching a football as a true freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina. This year uh, he had some balls that, you know, last year he would have caught. This year he didn't catch. Um, I can keep going if you'd like. My point in all of this is if this happens with one or two wide receivers, that's one thing. If this happens with multiple wide receivers over a period of time and there's a digression, folks, you have to go, it, it, it's, it's not the players, maybe one of them, but it is going back to the player development. And that's why I beat this drum all the time. Coaching matters. And if it doesn't, why the heck are they paid so well? So I just I just want to say that um, I just want to say that that I think that Tyler Grisham will probably grow into a better coach. Hopefully he will. Uh, but I think it was too much too soon. He didn't have coaching experience, and Clemson's paying for it right now. So so these are just some um, just some thoughts to throw out there. So. Um, Going through here, going through here, looking at the comments section. Uh, absolutely hilarious comments here. I'm not even going to go into them. Uh, SEC, or SEC dog, according to Dabo, the worst thing about Clemson is their yokel fans. Yeah. Yeah. That actually, actually, and I'm, I'm not even going there. All right, folks, you have stuck with me right now for 18 minutes and 15 seconds. Before I reveal my number one worst coaching hire in Clemson history, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to tell you about my video that I am currently working on. This is one of those videos that I go in, I pre-record it and spend unimaginable hours editing it. Uh, it's just because I got to get better at editing and quicker. You know, the more you do something, the faster you get at it. Uh, but I uh, released a video last week called Ked Klubnik, Is He a Bust? It was very entertaining. A lot of people liked it. Even if they don't like Cade, they liked the video and it got a lot of views. So that's one thing. I'm working on a video right now. I started editing it today. It's called Phil Maffa. And the idea behind it is. Is he the difference between success or failure? Is he the difference between a playoff run or a repeat of the 2023 season? That, by the way, he salvaged basically himself in those last games, including uh, the, the four-touchdown performance. Gator Bowl, 186 yards rushing against Notre Dame. Uh, so that video is going to come out. You know, I'm very big on Phil Maffa. He was part of that great recruiting class in 2021 uh, that had – um, Will Shipley, uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., Barrett Carter, Nate Wiggins, guys like that. He was part of that, but 
because Shipley was coming in at the same time, four-star Phil Moffa just kind of flew under the radar. He was there when Lin J was there. He was there when Kobe Pace was there. He played, He, I mean, he was basically third and fourth string. So he stayed. I got a video on that. I think you're going to really like it, so be looking out for that one to launch over the next uh, uh, few days or so, maybe a little more than that. Let's recap. So I said I gave you my six worst coaching hires in Clemson history. They did not have to be a head coach. It could be a head coach. It could be a position coach. Uh, number six, Kevin Steele, current and soon to be former Florida head coach, unless a miracle happens, Billy Napier, Thomas Austin, Brandon Streeter, Tyler Grisham, and for the worst coaching hire in Clemson history, we finally have a head coach. This guy took over in the 90s and did something that you really don't see people do anymore. He actually coach the bowl game yeah so clemson fired the head coach that was there because he went eight and three now he did lose like 57 to nothing to the soon to be florida state seminoles the national champions florida state seminoles with Char charlie ward he lost what something like 24 to nothing to north carolina and he lost homecoming with nelson welch on the team to a terrible wake forest team so all the Clemson fans said, we're done with Ken Hackfield. What are we going to do? So they said, let's go find someone who coached for Danny Ford, who reminds us of Danny Ford. Well, the only problem with that, the only problem with that was this guy had only head coached for one year. And it was the year that they fired Ken Hackfield. He was four and seven at Chattanooga, two and six in the in the uh, Southern Conference, but because he looked like Ford or reminded them of Ford, played for Ford, talked like Ford, kinda. They hired him, and what happened? Well, he coached Clemson full seasons from 1994 all the way to 1998. The best season he had was eight and four in 1995. I'll talk about that. In just a little bit, he was fired in 1998 for going three and eight, one and seven in conference. And this picture, my friends, is him being carried off the field of his very last ball game. Yes, winning only their third game of the year, they carried him off, but he just beat South Carolina. Tommy West. Sorry for the grainy photo. That's about one of the only ones I could find that really captured the moment. Tommy West was hired by people who have a lot of letters at the end of their name that tells you and I that they're not only smarter than you and I, that they know better than you and I basically on every subject under the sun. Now, I'm going to throw this out there. I have no problem with higher education. I only have a problem with it when it masks that, well, you really don't know what you're doing. Tommy West, in that one year that he that he uh, went 8-4, and four, that was 1995. That year he lost to, and I can remember this right off the top of my head, he lost to, uh, he lost to Virginia, he lost to... Uh, Florida State, by the way, that was the same year that Florida State got their first ACC conference loss since joining the conference. That's when the Barber Twins uh, was playing for them. So that, that season, that 1995 season, Clemson lost to Florida State 45-26. to I was at that game. My grandma uh, asked me what I wanted for my 13th birthday. Of course, this was right before my 13th birthday. I said, I want to see Florida State play Clemson. Grandma delivered. Uh, we turned around and played Virginia. Lost by 19 points to them. Played Georgia. Lost by two points. And you go, well, hold on. There was a fourth loss, Brian. When was that? Well, Clemson played in the 1996 Gator Bowl against an itty-bitty team called Syracuse. 
they had this guy named Donovan McNabb, and they had this wide receiver named Marvin Harrison. Not Junior, that's at Ohio State. We're talking about his daddy. They beat Clemson 41 to nothing. Now, folks, I want to tell you this. If you're, if, you're, if you're a younger guy, if you're like my son, he's 17. He's like, I, I was born in 06. I mean, what's, what's the big deal here with, with some of these players and so on? And, and you talking about the Gator Bowl. You need to understand something, younglings, that the Gator Bowl used to be ranked higher than the Chick-fil-A, formerly known as the Peach Bowl. So if you finish second in the ACC, most of the time you went to, you guessed it, the Gator Bowl. Well, Clemson went to the Peach Bowl a lot because, <coughs> excuse me, they couldn't make it to the Gator Bowl. And then some things flipped around as the years went on. It's, that's kind of getting older. You, you remember these things. I remember when there wasn't so many bowl games either. I am dating myself. And then some of y'all, y'all are older than me, and you're like, dude, I can remember when there's like five bowl games, and that's it. But for all of us old fogies sitting around here reminiscing about the old years, this was a big deal for Clemson to go to this bowl game. And they got throttled in this game 41, 41 to nothing, all right? Fast forward, the very next season, they opened up against University of North Carolina. This is when University of North Carolina had Leon Johnson. They had Chris Keldorf. They had L.C. Stevens playing for them. North Carolina beat them something like 38 to nothing, maybe 45 to nothing. Clemson did not score a point within, like, counting the, counting the bowl game loss. Then that opener the next season, they did not score a single, uh, an offensive touchdown, excuse me, like, until the fourth quarter of the Furman game after the North Carolina game. That is how bad their offense became. And let me tell you this, they had guys... They had guys like Dexter McLeon playing for them early, you know, a few years before that. But they had they had guys like Dexter McLean. Of course, Brian uh, Dawkins played for this Clemson team. Uh, you had guys like, um, um, so it was Brian Dawkins. Uh, Trevor Price played uh, for Clemson during this time. So it's not like you have a bunch of chumps. It's just, it was that bad. And uh, so... As I look at Clemson today and I start to see things not be like it was, say, five years ago, you know, the national championship 2016, that's what, six years ago, five years ago, something. I always get the times and lines mixed up because of when the bowl games played and or the championship games played and so on. But, you know, we're five years removed, at least, from the national championship, our last national championship. And at one time, you know, we were only a few years removed and so on. That's why sometimes I get fidgety and you're like, man, you're so pessimistic. It's because I remember that I can I can remember Clemson football in the eighties and you know, you would still hear about nineteen eighty one and and it wasn't too terribly far away, you know. So I never I never want to see the team get back to that status. But if there's anything that you need to take from this is that Clemson hired a coach who had only coached one year as a head coach. They hired him, and he was, what, four and seven? Something like that? And then they were shocked when he failed. They were totally shocked when he failed. We look at these other coaches that I went over, especially Napier, Austin, Streeter, Grisham. These are younger guys, some younger than others that they were put into positions that they shouldn't have been in and ultimately failed and made them look bad, right? So that's why I'm very big on coaching matters. Don't hire someone prematurely. Uh, and then if you're like Clemson, you can go out and get a Matt Luke who's been coaching for years, who is a proven leader. And then that makes way as more of the room, more of the leadership room, the position room, is filled with experienced guys. If you want to give one guy a chance to come in, 
and 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 have a shot at a bigger role, you have all of these people around them who can kind of help guide them on this. this is how we do things. This is what we don't do. I know that seems like a good idea. It seemed like a good idea t- to me too until I got experience, until I was around the right people. So if you have a room full of inexperienced guys or guys who are too much too soon, you're going to have teams losing more games. You're going no matter what talent you have on the field. Remember, Tommy West, he had Brian Daw- uh, he had Brian Dawkins playing for him. Yeah, I mean he had he had Trevor Price playing for him. He had some good players. Okay, so it's just really sad. This is just a lesson that coaches matter. Coaching matters at all levels of the game. So. Um, Folks, it is so good seeing here. I'm going to say hello to a bunch of people. Uh, first off, seeing here one of the channel supporters, a member, Parker Henderson, one of the old buddies, old pals, him and his, I call him Sister Chase, but it's his brother. Uh, Parker Henderson, it's good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. It'll be, before you know it, it'll be spring football, and then before you know it, it'll be, uh, uh, college, it'll be college football time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's good to see you. Parker supports the channel on a monthly basis, so if you're on an Apple product or an Apple iPhone, you're probably not going to see this, but there's a join button below here if you want to support the channel. It's $3 per month or $5 per month. What's the difference? Three or five. You you make that call. Parker, it's good to see you, buddy. <clears throat> Tiger Red Devil, you guessed it, Tommy West. <laughs> yeah, we know. Tyler Grisham is the worst hiring of all time. I... I I, I still think uh, that he just uh, he needs more experience. Sometimes it's good to leave home and go have that good experience. Uh, Philip Brist- Brister said, "Hey, hey, uh, Ken Hatfield was underrated. You know, they fired him. And he was eight and three. The best season that Tommy West ever had uh, was eight and three, and then he got blistered. So." I, I, if you go back and you were not alive during that time or you were you were kind of younger, you didn't pay attention to Ken Hatfield. Ken Hatfield had to replace Danny Ford. There was some type of NCAA investigation going on. There was rumors there was bad blood between him and uh, former Clemson AD Bobby Robinson. Get, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. I was young at the time, and you never know what part of history is kept, uh, kept uh, uh, pure and then, you know, stuff that's just rumors. But uh, when when... Danny Ford was in Clemson parted ways. Um, it, it was it was a big deal. It was a big deal, and um, they went in and they it, this. You got to be careful who you hire. You have to be careful who you hire. And uh, but Hatfield Hatfield got a really bad r- r- rap. Um, Kevin says Clemson should just stay away from Tommy's. Um. Ruby Ridge, Clemson players been doing, haven't been doing well since they got caught up doping in the 18. They've been getting injuries now more than they used to, especially the wide receivers. Heard a Big 12 guy say we weren't a big brand in my land there. Must have only watched our Tommy years. Uh, a big brand, we're, we're still a big brand, but we're, we're not dominant like, like we were. Can you imagine our current team? Playing 2018. I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining me. And just to recap, I have a new video that I'm actually editing right now, focusing on Phil Moffat. Is he the difference in 2024? Is he the difference between a playoff run or a repeat of this past season or something like it? He threw the team on his back. He's waited his turn. He's always produced. His yards per carry are fantastic. He's a bruiser. He doesn't have to have a world-class offensive line. You'll see the video. I think you'll enjoy it. That'll be coming out soon. If you like what I'm doing, I hope you will subscribe. It's free, and you'll pass this along to everyone. Also, if you want to join and support on a monthly basis, uh, there is a join button. Unless you're on an Apple product, 3 or $5 per month, you won't even notice that, even with inflation. Folks, I want to know what you think. Leave in the comments section below or in the chat. Let me know who's some of the worst coaches that Clemson has ever had. Tell me where I'm wrong. 
Tell me where I'm right. Either way, it's good to hear from you. And as always, it's good to be a Tiger. Go Tigers.